Good morning, Mike Widener here with the Trapper Education Program. We are making water sets today. It's a hot July morning, not much wind, and the humidity is high. I love winter. Let's go back and take a look at that submersion cable we made yesterday. I always encourage trappers to use cable over wire. Wire has a tendency to kink and break, but cable, if handled properly, won't do that. We've got the bank in, we got our sliding lock, and we've got the terminal end. I'm going to hook this terminal end up to a cinder block. Pretty simple to do. This is just one example of something you can use. I'm a boat trapper and of course I don't have a boatload of cinder blocks but I'll show you something different later. And we're going to grab this in and put a trap on here. Let's use a one and a half coil spring. This trap I've shortened the chain up. I've moved that swivel in a couple of lengths and it's dyed and ready to go. Let's hook that trap on. And that's ready to go. So I'm kind of guesstimating how far I need to pitch this out to bring that cable up tight. And that looks pretty good right there. The key here is tightness of the cable. You don't want any slack in that cable. So I'm going to move this up and stake it. It's always good to know what your substrate is here. I should be able to sink this stake all the way down and I can. So the submersion cable is set and we'll just check to make sure that trap can slide down easily and it can. Also make sure you don't have any obstructions out here in the water in the way of stumps or logs or what have you to hang the critter up. Now there's a number of different sets that we can make here. PVC pipe makes for a good, good coon set. We can pound that in that far. We can stuff some food in there. And we can take our trap and set it underneath here and set it good. Make sure it doesn't rock. And we'll probably take a coon or a muskrat or mink that way. Do a different way here of making a set. Let's say that you're in an area where it's public area and you don't want people seeing your set. I've got a little gizmo here I call the poke hole set. Got a short section of PVC with a wooden dowel and a length of rope attached. I can take that PVC, run it into the bank, ream it out a couple times, Maybe make another hole right next to it. Now I got a pipe full of mud. Push that mud out. Bring the doll back out. Sink that into your bait bucket. That could be mashed up jack mackerel with cat food or whatever. Now I got a tube full of bait. I go back into my poke hole here, all the way back. And as I'm bringing that pipe out, I can bring that, push that doll in and I've got a tube of food in there and we don't see anything. And of course, your trap, make a nice flat shelf here, embed that right in front of it, push your chain down, and you've got a beautiful set for a coon mink or muskrat. And to sweeten this up, I like to take Q-tip, and the uh, bottle of my favorite lure here. This is secret stuff, so I can't reveal what it is. And now I take that Q-tip and I put that right up above that little poke hole. 
you have to worry about the trap? Will the animal see it if you just set it on the bottom like that? No, he won't see it. He won't see it at all? No, he'll, it'll blend in and uh, he will not notice it. This set here, I was going to ask you, when you put it, does it matter if it points up or points down? Well, if you got to point it up and it rains, the water is going to go in there. If you got to point it down, I guess that would be okay. I always Do just. Do you ever have trouble with birds seeing the bait in there? Not, no, this is not sight exposed it's bait. It's not sight exposed. Let's make a pocket set out of this. Jim, do you mind if we dig a little hole here oh, in the bank? Go ahead and dig a hole. All right, this is what we call a tile spade. And I like this. It's, it's got a nice bright handle to it, though it used to be brighter a long time ago. But it's important if you're wading in the water to have that third leg so you don't fall over and soak yourself, which I'm sure most of us have done before. But a tile spade makes for a nice pocket. You can ram it in there and turn a little bit. And what we're trying to do is simulate a little muskrat hole there. I don't want to make it too wide. I like to keep that width about the same as a one and a half coil spring. I'm going to go on up here a little ways and it should be slanted up. There we go. Now I'm going to secure the entrance here. And for my bait, let's assume that this is uh, a chunk of muskrat haunch or maybe a uh, a chunk of fish or whatever, I poke a hole into it, and then I cut myself Y sticks in the summertime. This is something Kermit Stern showed me back in, I think it was 87 when he came, or it was 86 when he came to the Wisconsin Trappers Convention. We held the nationals that year. The important thing is your bait goes on like this, and the Y stick prevents it from falling out. And now you got your bait up off the water also keeps the mice from from eating the whole part up so now we'll go ahead set that trap again and there's lots of discussion about exactly where that goes but the whole point here is to have the animal go between the jaws and not over between that way when he puts his foot down the trap, it's going to grab it on both sides versus possibly throwing it out. Again, seat that trap and then push down on that chain so it's buried. Um, Trapper Art Zimmerman taught me a set years ago that's actually kind of a fun set. You understand the nature of mink, they're weasels, and basically he said instead of using a bait, use a scent. Okay. And I, I asked him what he meant by that, and basically he makes a pocket set, digs a hole in the bank, beds the one and a half, puts it on the drowner, but he takes a muskrat that he's caught earlier in the day out of his pack, dips it in the water, throws it up on the bank while he's doing all the work. All that water runs off the muskrat and leaves a little puddle of muskrat smell there. Dips it back in the water when he's got his hole set, dips the muskrat in the hole. Well, I was lucky enough to watch a mink work one of my sets once and he was sure there was a muskrat there. Well, there wasn't, so he worked up and down, he saw the hole, dove into the hole, got caught in the trap, went down the drowner. It's amazing, and I've used that set ever since. A lot of my, my students call me and say, how do I catch a mink? It's the easiest set to make. You don't need any, any bait, you don't need any scent, just uh, you need to catch a muskrat, that's it. And it's worked for him, and, and I, I credit Trapper Art for teaching me that. Back to the pocket set. I like to put a guide stick just outside the jaws here. This helps guide the animal into the trap. We're going to do one more thing here to sweeten this up. Not every coon is going to be walking along the shoreline here. They might be up on top. So what we'll do is we'll just dig a little trail here, give that coon or mink a reason to come on down. Fresh diggings here always attract the critters. And then I got a little plastic bottle of fish oil. I like to put them in these little four ounce plastic bottles and go ahead and squirt that all the way up. And now any coon that's walking up on the bank here, they're going to smell that, they're going to come on down, they're going to investigate this pocket. Uh, what else can we do with this set? Well, we can make a blind set. 
A blind set means you're working with no lure and no bait. And we'll leave that trap set. So let's assume here that we haven't dug our pocket yet. A blind set is where I think the animal is going to step. And right along here I've got a vertical bank. I'll go ahead and take that guide stick, set it right here, grab, come grab my one and a half, and this time I'm going to have those jaws in this orientation, so the animal walking along the bank is going to step through the jaws and not over. And that's our blind set. Now submersion cables guarantee me that my catch is going to be down here and dispatched. I can run up to a four day check that way. Those of you who have thought about using grapples or drags might want to think twice about that. The last time I used a grapple, I attached this to a one and a half coil spring in a drainage ditch on a buddy's farm back in the 80s. And I thought this is the way to go. And I come back the next morning and trap and drag were gone and I kept looking and kept looking and there in the top of an oak tree about 50 yards away was that coon with my grapple. So I had to go home and grab the 22, shot that coon and it fell and the grapple grabbed a branch and it swung there top of that tree for about 20 years before the farmer cut the tree down for firewood. I don't like using grapp grapples or drags. All right, for those of you who are using enclosed trigger traps on the water line, which I enjoy using, you probably notice that the mice are having a field day cleaning out your enclosed trigger traps. That's a problem on my trap line too. The question is, how can we keep those mice out of the enclosed trigger traps? Well, I've learned that mice don't like to swim. So, kind of rigged up this little gizmo here. It's just a piece of lath, sharpened. I got varying lengths of lath and I got it zip tied here. So I can stick this out into the water and we'll go ahead and S hook this on. That's the versatility of S hooks. You can open and close them pretty easily. So I'll go ahead and reset my stake. Cable's nice and taut. We'll assume I've got my enclosed trigger trap here packed with food and I, oh, I just won't set this but the idea here is I'm going to have this right here. A little grass wad on the top here so I don't have to worry about birds with the uh, exposed bait, but those coon will be walking along here and they're going to smell that and they're going to reach in there and they will pull that and you'll find the whole shooting match down at the bottom of that drowner cable. So I've got a couple buckets of these with the last cut in varying lengths depending on how thick the substrate is underneath there. Just more tricks on the, on the water line. And that takes care of this spot. We'll move over here and show a couple of different sets.